Tariq Elite on Tariq Elite Radio. You better recognize. I've been running for so long, baby. That it gets easy every time around. And I know it might seem crazy, but I noticed you loving me. So I'm not gonna run no more. And girl, I'ma give your love a try. Damn right there. That's that new Marcus Houston. That's called Give Your Love a Try. Your Love a Try. Let me bump some more of that. This is shit right here. Woo! I give your ass a try. Alright, anyway, anyway, I'm spazzing out. What's going on, y'all? Welcome to another episode of the Mac Lessons Radio Show. My name is Tarika Leek. Also known as King Flizzle, King Flex, Tariq Nasheed. And I'm ready to chop up some good game, ladies and gentlemen. Today is going to be a very fun show. We're going to be doing this show live. It's streaming on TariqLive.com, by the way. So if you're listening in at TariqLive.com, stay tuned to some real hot fire. We're going to chop up some real good game today. Now, on last week's show... I talked about seven women not to trust. And a lot of women hit me up with emails. A lot of people hit me up there. They were saying like, well, Tariq, what's up with the dudes? Give us some game for the dudes. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to chop up some game for the ladies. But the fellas can listen in too. Fellas can listen in too. So today's topic is going to be seven men not to trust. So it's going to be a very fun show. And we're going to get right into it. After these messages, we'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Just like the same, I to turn the page. Ladies and gentlemen, join me, Tariq Elite Nasheed, live on September 21st, 2013. That's a Saturday at Tennessee State University Gentry Center. That is in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm going to be doing a live lecture there. It's my first time in Nashville. I'm going to be spitting that hot fire. I want to see you in the place if you are surrounding Nashville, Memphis, Alabama, Mississippi, Atlanta, wherever you're from, come on down to Nashville, Tennessee. The game is going to be hot. The hot fire is going to be hotter. Ladies and gentlemen, get your tickets at Ticketmaster.com or you get your tickets at TariqLive.com. Again, that's me, Tariq Elite Nasheed, live in Nashville, Tennessee, Saturday, September 21st at the Tennessee State Gentry Center in Nashville, Tennessee. I will see you there. Check out the brand new instructional DVD called The Bad Boy's Guide to Dating by Mr. Lacario. This instructional DVD course teaches you everything you need to know about attracting quality women and how to step your game up. You can get this at MrLacario.com. That's M-R-L-O-C-A-R-I-O.com. Or you can get it at iLookSexyNaked.com. That's The Bad Boy's Guide to Dating DVD by Mr. Lacario. Check out the brand new mixtape, The Progression 2, by anime-driven artist Bruce Stevens, a.k.a. Tree of Life. The first single and video is called Good Girls Gone Bad. It explores the cause and effects of our actions and the cycles created in relationships. That's the Tree of Life EP coming soon. For more info and art, go to IamBruceStevens.com. You know, bad credit is very, very unplayer. You need a viable credit score for a car, for homes, for business loans, the whole nine yards. Primary Credit Boost makes it easy and it shows you how to save thousands of dollars by doing it for yourself. And you can make a profit while providing services for others. Get a copy of the new e-course delivered to your home and learn how to delete negative issues, raise credit scores, and get trade lines in as little as 14 to 30 days. Go to PrimaryCreditBoost.com and get your score up. 
CaseUltra.com. Sign up for CaseUltra.com's t-shirt subscription and get a new t-shirt delivered every month. This month's shirt is based on the Egyptian god Toph, who wrote the book The Emerald Tablets, and that holds the secrets to the universe and is considered the scribe of the gods. You get a t-shirt and magazine booklet and free stickers every time you order a t-shirt. Use the coupon code KFLEX and get 50% off on everything on the first month when you sign up right now. That is CaseUltra.com. TheHoneyHouse.com. That's the new social networking site where you can meet new friends and you can socialize online. This is your chance to get your chat game up and females who log in daily will get access to cash prizes and whoever imports the most contacts will get free giveaways, ladies and gentlemen. So do not wait. Log in today. You have nothing to lose. Remember, this is a free site. That's TheHoneyHouse.com. D-A-HoneyHouse.com. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Mac Lessons Radio Show. And again, I am your gracious host, Mr. Tariq Elite. Shout out to everybody who's listening in live right now at TariqLive.com. And Tariq Live, you can also, again, go to Tariq Live and get tickets to join me in Nashville, Tennessee this weekend. This Saturday, I am going to be in Nashville, Tennessee, family. So I want y'all to show me a good time out there in Nashville. What is there to do in Nashville? All my Nashville people, call in. 818-850-5404. I want to get into something out there in Nashville. I don't want to be out there having to go to the goddamn Grand Ole Opry House or Opryland or Dollywood or some shit like that. I want to go to some real spots out there in Nashville. So let me know what's popping in Nashville and represent. We're going to have a great time. And if you're surrounding Nashville, if you're in Atlanta, Birmingham, Memphis, wherever you are, drive on over to Nashville because the game is going to be hot this coming Saturday night. That's September 21st, ladies and gentlemen. Shout out to everybody, by the way, who has been contributing to the Kickstarter um, Hidden Colors 3 Fund. We're still getting money, um, donations to complete Hidden Colors 3. And we're at the halfway mark right now. We need to go over the top. I need everybody who's listening, ladies and gentlemen, to go to kickstarter.com and donate to the film. Even if you can donate as little as $5. If everybody who's listening, everybody who's within the sound of my voice donates just five bucks, we can get the funding we need to complete Hidden Colors 3, which is something that is so much needed, ladies and gentlemen. But we're doing good, but I want us to go over the top with it, ladies and gentlemen. So the phone number again is 818-850-5404. Hey, how you doing? Hey, what's up, man? Who's calling? Hey, this is Leon from Cincinnati. How you doing? Leon from Cincinnati. What's on your mind, player? Oh, nothing. I just wanted to say, first of all, I love your show, man. It's the greatest thing going. Much respect. Yes, but sir. I, I, I need some advice on how to how to get rid of my tricking ways. My nephew called me an insatiable, uncontrollable trick. Hurt my heart. <laughs> Uh, your nephew is up on game, and much respect to him. Now, so what's what's? No, what's... not really. Cause he kind of caked a little bit, but we ain't gonna get into his business. <laughs> Thought about me. Now, now, how long have you been having the tricking problem? Oh, uh, I've been a trick for uh, probably years. I mean, it's just you know, I, I came into my own money. You know, at about twenty five, I'm thirty seven now. Okay. Uh, ever since I came into my own money, you know, I've, I've just been known to like when I lived in it. Why? See, I'm trying to, you know, like I told y'all, I'm, you know, the sense that that's my home. But when I lived in there, why? So I took this bad little Spanish bride to, the port, to uh, you know, Applebee's on, on the Humble. And, and the cats around there was, was mad and salty, calling me a trick like you messing up the game. I'm like, dude, I got $30 for, a, you know, a little outing with me and the lady. Well, the thing is, you know, there's nothing wrong with going to a restaurant or whatever. But the dudes was probably looking funny style because they probably knew the kind of female she was. And, you know, certain, okay. yeah, certain females you ain't even supposed to spend that little $30 on a restaurant with. You're supposed to go ahead and hit that and leave that alone. And when women who kind of have a reputation of being um, slutty or not so thorough, when you start cupcaking with them and tricking with them, you're giving them a false sense of importance. And then they know that they're not even worth that. So it's time for them in their minds to come up off you. So then they'll start playing the role in order to get everything they can get from you because they know once you find out about who they really are, you're going to dump them anyway. So it's like in their mind, let me get everything I can get before he sees the real me. So this is why 
there's so so many dangers to being a trick tricking is such a temporary phenomenon it's like cheating the game you're playing a game but instead of playing the game by the rules you say fuck it i'm just gonna buy myself a trophy and it never works like that that's not a real victory in the dating game you, you need a victory that's the whole point of it not just to you know you just want to bust a damn nut just keep spending your money on hookers holes exports prostitutes or whatever but you're still gonna feel empty inside because you ain't got no game they don't like you and busting them little miscellaneous nuts for 40 50 dollars that shit is gonna get tired and that's gonna fuck with your self-esteem so that's why a dude who's single and young should definitely not be no trick. Now, I can understand if you're like a married dude or whatever, you're somebody who's really in the public eye and you want to give people a little hush money and you don't want nobody blowing up your spot. That's understandable. I don't co-sign it, but I can get it. But young dudes, especially dudes like 40 and under, who's single, uh-huh. you shouldn't really be tricking, man. Just go ahead and use the mouthpiece. You'll be surprised how down the women are going to be just based on your mouthpiece. And that's the real gratification you're going to get. So look at it and think about it in those terms. You feel me? Oh, definitely, Fred. That was a very deep answer. Uh, I just want to say I'm looking forward to the day show to see how many, how many of these seven men I am or was. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Yes, I'm going to break that down. And it's a real good game for the fellas to listen into as well. So thanks for the call, bro. Yes, indeed. So the, the show, the game is for women, but the game is for men today, too, because I'm going to talk about the seven men that women shouldn't trust. And some of these guys might be you, fellas. Some of these dudes might be you. What's up? Who's calling? King Flex. What's going on? This is Jimmy from uh, D.C. What's up, Jimmy? How you doing, player? I'm, I'm good. As a matter of fact, when we were in the airport, as a matter of fact, oh, that's when you were leaving. There you go. You're the, the military brother, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Much, definitely, definitely. Much respect, man. I How you call, doing? Yeah, I just, call, I just called to chime in real quick, man. Uh, dudes, uh, dudes to watch out for, man. Is dudes who like to like, uh, you know, conversate with girls, man. Like not conversate, but you know, dudes who like to gossip with females. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. All right, man. That's thank- all I have. Man. There you go. Thank you for the call, Jimmy. Jimmy's a good dude. I was in D.C. and I was going through the airport and I ran into Jimmy. I ran into a whole bunch of people who listened to the show. I was running into people left and right. They love the show. They love Hidden Colors. And again, shout out to the Hidden Colors donators. Go to kickstarter.com right now while you're listening to me live. Go to Kickstarter. Throw a little something down on Hidden Colors 3 so we can get this knocked out. We as black folks, we can we can get this done. We can get this done quickly and efficiently. And we can handle our business and keep this thing pushing. Let's see who else is on the phone. What's going on? Who's calling? Hey, what up? It's D from Chicago. What's your name, brother? Uh, D. D from Chicago. What's on your mind? I got to get back out to Chicago, by the way, too. I got to get back. Oh, out man, to he Chicago. got me. Yeah, I missed your lecture last time you was here, but at least I made it up for joining the Kickstarter. I actually contributed to that. Oh, yes, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So yeah, what, how much did you donate to the Kickstarter? You know what? Not too much, you know, but, you know, I felt like since I missed out and I'm like catching up on the hidden colors one and two now, you know, I, I wanted to put something in and just keep it going because I, you know, I saw a lot of people putting it in. So, yes, sir. Everything helps. Everything helps, man. I appreciate that. So what else is on your mind, player? Yeah, Tariq, man, I, I'm running into a situation. I've been listening to your show for a while, but, um, man, I got a, you know, a really good job uh, out here in Chicago. And uh, just recently, man, I... I've been hit up with child support. Oh damn! And yeah, and um, you know, it, it, it's you know a really good job, man. But you know, I haven't I always been the type of dude that moves around a lot. You know, I'm not stuck with one type of job. I'm working on a lot of projects. I got a, a couple of friends down in the valley down there working on a couple of projects. We're always working together. So, man, ever since I've been hit up with this thing, um, just been feeling like really, really, uh, you know, I'm feeling really stuck. Here. You know, like I can't move around, can't do nothing. You know, it's, I could, I mean, I could, I can't even, I was supposed to be going out to California to continue to working on some stuff. I can't even do that. I mean, everything in my life right now is on hold. And um, I just want to give thoughts on it. Now, 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 how old is your, your child and the, the baby's mom? Where is she? How, how are y'all dealing with each other? What's the situation with that? Uh, it's a week, man. I, I hate to say this, but it was like one of those situations. I was out in Baltimore trying to get some pussy, man. Like it was like a one night thing. Damn. And the child is like three years old. I found out about it, 
you know, but I just, I've, I just been putting it back, putting it back, you know, like, kind of like get it out of my mind, like it doesn't exist, but it finally caught up to me. Yeah, dude, so. that's the thing. Y'all do, man, let me, let me say this, man, on some real shit, dudes. Y'all got to stop thinking with dick vision, man. Niggas be throwing their lives away for some little ratchet one night stand ass. And cats just got to be careful, man. These ratchets are not playing, and especially a Baltimore ratchet. Baltimore ratchets are very infamous for the come up. They struggling out there in Baltimore. So those uh, yeah uh, believe me yeah. I'm, I'm still i'm still trying to get my head around it. yeah yeah well you got your head up in that that ratchet ass and and, and knock this woman up and you should have known better man yeah, yeah, yeah. when y'all mess with these thirsty ass women who ain't got shit to lose it comes back and bites you in the ass dude and it ain't worth it just to yeah. get that damn nut and these motherfuckers draining your pockets for the next 18 fucking years she came up dude these motherfuckers out here trying to come up and my thing is, dude, what you're going to have to do, get you, uh, start you a, a corporation LLC and um, kind of put some of your money in there. That You know, guys got to know how to diversify their funds so that every little ratchet they bang doesn't have access to their shit immediately. You got to know how to move your little money around, especially if you're out here right. slinging dick miscellaneously. So you, you and, but the thing is, the catch 22 is dudes who think about diversifying their money don't think in terms of diversifying their dick correctly because you got you throw your dick and invest your dick and throw it all over the place you got to treat your dick like you treat your money you dig you can't just throw it anywhere you can't spend your money on garbage you can't fuck garbage you can't spend your money on gutter shit you can't fuck chicks in the gutter you got to treat your dick like money understand that yeah yeah Always i mean i, I thought that. about man like you know I, I do have an llc that i'm working on but um, you know, I thought about putting a lot of my income into that. Exactly. Um, but but at, but at the same time, I know like at the end of the year, like I gotta always turn in my taxes to them and all of that stuff. So it just I'm, my you know my biggest thing right now is that, that I, you know I'm I'm ready to move out. You know I, I'm, I'm working on a couple of things. I wanted to move out, but it seems like that situation, man. Like it, it's I, I, you know only option that I see right now is just for me to put money away and just keep going and just you know what I'm saying till I find something else, but. Um, yeah, I tried the corporation move too. Wait, wait, that's the name of the game, man. Is protect yourself at all times. Y'all niggas be getting vulnerable. Some woman um, opens up her butt cheeks and puts it in your face, and niggas get vulnerable and start getting misty eyed and shit. Protect yourself at all times. I don't give a fuck how down the woman is, how cool she's talking, how ride or die she seems. Protect yourself at all times because you never know when a motherfucker's gonna turn on you. You got to think like a hustler out here. Y'all niggas be thinking like squares. I don't trust a motherfucker. You understand that? And that's not to say that anybody's bad, but I don't know when a person is going to turn or what kind of emotional flair they're going to have. So I don't trust people as far as I can throw them. I trust me and I protect myself and I trust people as much as I can. But at the end of the day, I'm still going to protect myself as much as I can because you never know when somebody's going to try to blow up your spot. So always think in those terms so you don't have to start playing cleanup the best form of security is prevention. So you need to learn how to prevent stuff like this because now you're in the thicker shit and you got to clean up shit and that's more difficult than prevention. But there's ways to do that, man. Hit me up. We'll, we'll talk about it off air, man. Uh, and he, email me at info at and we'll chop up game. You feel me? Hello? Is that nigga still on here? Shit, the child support payments turned that nigga phone off. Shit. What's going on? Who's calling? Hey, Brother King Flex, how you feeling? This is Naeem. I'm calling from uh, Bear Delta way by way of Philadelphia. How are you, my brother? I'm good, brother. How you doing? What's on your mind, player? I'm doing extremely well, man. Yeah, just wanted to run this by you real quick, man. What do you think about how we can... Now, you're doing a wonderful, a masterful job, I must say, brother. Yes, sir. With the, uh, the books that you're putting out, the, the pay-per-view specials. But, man, something like, you know, it, 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 a thousand years from now... I want to make sure that my grandson and my great 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 grandson have access to the Mac and game, man. What do you think about ha us having an institution of Mac and where we certify Macs, man? What do you think about that concept, well, that they, idea? Well, they used to have that back in the day, back in the streets. You know, you you had to to be in the streets to be in the game. Cats had to know who you were. Just know any dude could be in the streets. They would run you about the streets if you weren't a thorough dude. Now. 
you have there are so many other entities that interfere with the game the drug game came in and and weakened the game on that level also the internet now that any dude can pop on the internet and and say he's this say he's that and that weakens the game as well so there's not a lot of face-to-face interaction like it used to be so there should be some dudes out here who are interacting face-to-face with each other man to man woman to woman and 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 chopping up game and building an institution where you can keep out the simps squares tricks busters and keep the game intact and we try to do that with the um um, UPA site, unitedplaysofamerica.com. And we've been having problems with trolls coming in the room, and I got to figure out ways to block people from trolling yeah. and all that old dumb shit. Yeah. But we try to keep it as sucker free as possible. But I feel exactly what you're saying. And hit me up, info at tarikalit.com, so we can chop up some game about that. All right? I appreciate you. I appreciate you, big brother. Yes, sir. Face, man. Much respect. Yes. Don't forget, people, Hidden Colors 3, we need you to go to kickstarter.com right now and contribute to Hidden Colors 3 so we can go ahead and get this movie popping. We're at the halfway mark with the funding. We're doing good, but we need to go over the top. If everybody listening right now can go to kickstarter.com and type in Hidden Colors 3, we can get this thing popping. We can get it over the top. Now, y'all ready for some game? Y'all ready for me to get into the ism? I'll take a couple of more calls before I get into the ism, before I get into the game. I just wanted to chop up some ism with everybody. Let's see who we got on the phone. We got a lot of folks calling. What's up? Who's calling? What's going on, Flex? This is Ray from Brooklyn, but I'm out in Atlanta right now. What's going on in Atlanta, Ray? Man, I love this city. It, it, it's a lot of moistness out here, you would say, dog. <laughs> Yo, listen, listen, Flex, let me tell you a story. I had a little situation this morning, so I'm out doing my morning jog or whatever. Yeah. A dude, a, a dude, a little moist dude. Besides, he gonna start circling the area that I'm that I'm jogging. <laughs> I had to I had to, I had to run up on his car. Like, yo, what's up, man? Like, come on, don't don't play out here like that. What's going on with this shit, man? Nigga, was it was it Mr. C? Was it? <laughs> I, 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 y'all from Brooklyn, man. <laughs> <laughs> yo, listen, man, I miss the sea thing. It's crazy right That's now, man. Yo, you know what was crazy? We kind of forgot about it. It kind of went under the rug until this shit. Yeah, yeah, and most moist niggas are getting real bold, nigga. They they roll yeah, up on yo, you. Yo, yo, flex, man, out here in the age. Listen. I, it's retarded. It's retarded out here. Yeah, nigga. So, man, protect but Definitely, you. definitely. I, I just want to, this first time I got through, I definitely want to say, yo, big ups to everything you're doing. This, this, this information you giving is, is really powerful. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes, like for, from, from, from one black man to another, it's really powerful. Much respect, man. I appreciate that. Thanks for the call, brother. Yes, indeed, man. Y'all better protect them cheeks out there in Atlanta, man. Them dudes, they're not playing games. You got some damn moist gangsters out there in damn Atlanta. Them niggas will run up on you and pull a moist jack move. I'm telling you, them niggas are bold. When we stay down in Atlanta, we stay in Midtown, and at like 3 o'clock in the morning, it'll be like moist gangbangers. And they'll run up on you like, hey, nigga, give it up. I'm like, hey, dude, I ain't got no money on me. Like, this ain't about no money. I'm like, what the fuck do you want? (laughs) Nigga, because I ain't got shit else to give you. Nigga, they be shaking niggas down for balls. Let me get one more call, ladies and gentlemen. Then we're going to get into the game. Are y'all ready for some game? Because the game is going to be heavy today. Let's see. One more call. What's up? Who's calling? Hey, it's Rick. It's JR. Hey, JR. How you doing, love? Good. How are you? I'm good. What is going on with you, June? Um, I'm just on this whole five. Just got off work. <laughs> there you go. So what, what kind of what kind of man um, issues are you having, June? Shut up. Don't so worry. <laughs> Your life, ladies. Here she go. No, I don't work. Where you at, June? Hold on, June. You sound like a transformer. Hold on, June. Your phone was tripping. Go ahead. Huh? Your phone was tripping just now. Go ahead again. Oh, I sent her your call. It was called calling earlier. It's not conversate. It's convert. Yeah, yeah, we know that. You know, sometimes the calls are not as grammatically as correct as possible, <laughs> but we 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 got them. It was me. I was like, oh, yes. It's not- <laughs> <laughs> What's your? Let people know what your Instagram is so they can see how cute you are, June. Tell people your Instagram. Oh, why? So they can see how sexy you are. Uh, underscore June Rose underscore. 
underscore June Rose underscore June is an Asian persuasion. What? A, what now, where are you from? Laos, Thai. What is? What are you from? Where are you no, from? No, from Bur- Burma. Okay, Burma. That's right. I always forget. I know it's like like South Asia. I know it's down in South Asia. But anyway, yeah. all right. But listen to the show. I'm, I'm about to drop some good game for the ladies, June. So stay tuned. All right. Okay, I'm listening. All, all right. right. All right. Bye-bye. Bye bye. That is June Rose. Very cute young lady of Asian persuasion. Now let's get into some game. Let's drop the game. I'm ready to drop some game, ladies and gentlemen. Let's drop some game. Everybody get your pen, get your paper, get your pads, get your notebooks. We're going to drop some game. Today's show, we're talking about seven men not to trust. Seven men not to trust, ladies and gentlemen. Now, last week, like I said, we did seven women not to trust. Now, we're going to talk about the seven men not to trust. And then, men, this might be you. Now, number one, the guy you don't trust, ladies, you don't trust a fat dude who just came into some money. Ladies, do not trust a fat dude who just got some money. You know why? Because a lot of fat niggas who just got money, they're using that money to get revenge on women who shitted on them when they were broke. You seen a fat nigga who done hit the lottery or he done got a record deal or he done, you know, got him a little settlement, got him a little disability or whatever. That nigga gets real brand new and he starts trying to be a shot caller and he, he turns into an asshole a little bit. So it ain't really about him upholding the game. The fat nigga is going to turn into a real big old trick. And he's going to be an asshole trick at that. So ladies, you got to be careful about hollering at a fat nigga who just got some money because you think you're about to come up real easy on him because he done got him some paper and he's a fat nigga but he's probably a real big asshole and I can pop my collar to him if he has some game behind it but a lot of times he's just being an aggressive trick he's like here here's a $500 twerk for me bitch you know it's that type of mentality you understand what I'm saying So the fat nigga who just came into some money, you got to be real careful about that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the second guy you got to have a little trust issue with. The second guy, that's the dude who eats pussy on a first date. Ladies, do not trust the nigga who's eating pussy on a first date. 99.9% of the women out here, if you're an adult female, you have probably ran across that nigga. You probably ran across several niggas who was trying to eat that pussy on the first date. Now, I ain't saying, now, now we all are going to try to hit on the first date. There ain't nothing wrong with that. But when niggas are trying to go downtown on that first date and he's trying to lap up cooch on the first date, you don't trust that nigga because he's out here eating everybody. That's a sign of extreme thirst. The minute you see this nigga, you uh, meet him, you get in the car. That nigga drop his head on your lap scatting. He's scat like Ella Fitzgerald. That nigga, the minute you walk in the door, he's scat. He's trying to scat on that pussy. So you got to watch out for dudes like that. Can't trust dudes like that because dudes like that don't really have any discipline. If they're out here trying to eat up all these women, they don't have any decorum. They don't have any couth. They're, they're real thirsty and ladies I would say you gotta stay away from these dudes it ain't it ain't that you're so flattering that he just has to eat you out that nigga eats everybody out if he can so you don't trust that you don't want a nigga who's out here just eating up everything in the damn streets you dig now let's get to number three the third kind of guy that ladies you might have to be weary about that you shouldn't trust that's the guy who blames everything on drinking. You better be very careful about dealing with a dude who likes to blame everything on drunk, being drunk and blame everything on drinking. You got to watch out for that. And he'll try to plant the seed early. He'll say something like, oh, man, I was out with the boys. We were, man, I was drinking. And, you know, when I drink, I kind of black out. So ooh, I, I better tone down on my drinking. If I drink, boy, I just go, ooh, I just go all over the place. So when they start saying stuff like that, when they start letting you know that they don't have any accountability for their drinking, you better watch out for that because then sooner or later you get in a relationship with this dude and you find about five or $10,000 missing out of y'all account 
and you're like, hey, what happened to the money? And you're like, oh, man, sweetie, I got drunk and I went to the strip club and I just tricked all the money off. I was drunk. I didn't know what I was doing. So that nigga knew what he was doing. When you get drunk, you know what the fuck you're doing. You just do what the hell you really wanted to do. All drinking does is it just removes constraints. It just gives you the confidence to do the shit you really wanted to do anyway. That's all it does. It doesn't make you do anything that you did not want to do. It removes inhibitions. That's all it does. So all it does is remove the the filter to stop this nigga from being a super trick. So you got to be careful of dudes who use drinking as an excuse for everything. Now, number four. Now, this is going to tie in with one of the guys who called earlier. Number four, the fourth type of guy that, ladies, you need to watch out for and you need not to trust. That's a dude who has at least three baby mamas, and he ain't with either one of them. If there's a dude out here, if he has at least three baby moms, and he ain't with now one of them, you don't trust that nigga because it shows that he doesn't have the decorum to commit. It shows a lot about his character. It shows that this dude will just knock up women indiscriminately without trying to be in a relationship with either one of them. I can understand if you got a baby mama and you got a a wife or a girlfriend or somebody that you're with, but you just got all these chicks you knocking up and you ain't with them. That's a problem. That's a behavior pattern. And a lot of women think they can change motherfuckers like this and you can't really change people like this. Again, like I said earlier to the caller, you got to treat your money and your dick the same way. And if dudes are very loose and indiscriminate with their dick, they're going to be loose and indiscriminate with their money. You value your dick, you value your money. You understand that? Now, let's get to number five, ladies and gentlemen, of the fifth type of dude that you cannot trust, ladies and gentlemen. Fifth dude you can't trust Ladies, never trust a light-skinned thug. Oh, yeah, I said that. Let me say it one more time, ladies and gentlemen. You never trust a light-skinned thug. Now, you say, why don't you trust a light-skinned thug? Well, the thing is, if there's a light-skinned nigga who's thugging, it's going to be one extreme or another. If there's a light-skinned nigga who's thugging, he's going to be one extreme or another. Either he's going to be a fake thug which you really want to stay away from because you don't want to be around no fake thug or wannabe thug because the thing is you go out with some little soft baked red bone nigga wannabe thug and he runs into some real thugs both of y'all gonna get your asses beat or raped or something you dig now if he's a real thug a light skinned nigga who's a real dude who's about that life That nigga's extremely dangerous because to be a light-skinned thug in the streets, you got to go overboard to show people you about that life. You got to show motherfuckers in the streets that you about that. So he's going to be into all types of gangster shit. He's going to be the nigga who done probably caught two or three bodies in the past. He done shot two or three motherfuckers, stabbed some people. So that nigga's really about that life if he's a light-skinned thug. And that's too dangerous to be around. You don't want to be around that. You understand that? Because he's going to have to show the streets that he's with it. And also, if that nigga goes to prison, he's going to have to be extra gangster because a light-skinned nigga in prison, he walk around the prison yard, they're going to look at that nigga like he's Holly Berry. So they're going to be campaigning for that nigga's boy hole. So he's going to have to be really thugged out to get them niggas off his ass. You understand? So you don't want to fuck with no light-skinned thug because either he's going to be extremely about that life or he's going to be a wannabe thug. And there's ways to know if he's a a wannabe thug. Women, you can kind of test dudes out and just look for certain signs to to see if he's a light-skinned wannabe thug. You understand? Like I said, if here's here's a couple of uh, clues to watch out for. Now, if he has some gangster tattoos, but the tattoos on that nigga's butt cheeks, that ain't no real fucking thug. If he's kind of nigga who pours out liquor for the homies, but he's pouring out a fucking banana daiquiri, that ain't no real fucking thug. If that nigga has on a bandana, but the bandana smells like Dr. Miracle edge control gel, that ain't no real fucking thug. You understand that? So watch out for niggas who claim blood and look like Drake or some shit. So be very careful of that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's move on to number six. 
The sixth dude that you got to be weary of, you, you can't really trust. And I, when I say you can't trust, let me say, in many cases, just be weary of. Because there are exceptions to all the rules and everything like that. But if trust might be a strong word, but let's at least say be weary of these dudes. You got to be weary of some of them. Now, like I said, number six, the sixth dude that you got to be weary of. That's the single dude who's always up in church. Got to be careful about the single dude who's in church all the time. There's a dude who's in church all the time and he's single. That's a red flag. Now, a lot of women, this is the catch 22. A lot of women say, I want a nice God fearing church going guy. I hear women say that, but think about that. Ladies, if you get a dude who's a church going guy and he's single, that should raise red flags. Now, there's nothing wrong with um, having your religion. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not shitting on that. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. But usually if there's a young guy who's single, always going to church, there's a few things going on there. Either this dude used to be on drugs or something. Or he's moist. You see a lot of that. A lot of moist dudes be up in the church if they're single. I ain't talking about dudes who's going to church with their family. But if you see a single dude up in church all the time, either he's moist, he's been on drugs, or he's probably trying to be a preacher himself, which is a cool thing. If he's trying to become a preacher or a pastor himself, that's that's something else. Or he might play the drums for the church. That's different. Somebody who's actually working for or with the church that's different but i'm just talking about a nigga in there getting the holy ghost and shit he's trying to get off them moist demons off his booty hole you dig what i'm saying so you got to understand that um you you got to be weary of dudes who in church all the time now let's get to the last one ladies and gentlemen number seven third well the seventh guy ladies and gentlemen that you cannot trust or that you should be weary of let me just say should be weary of the last guy that you should be weary of that's the overly romantic nerd that is the overly romantic nerd ladies now a lot of times y'all see a nerd and you're like okay this nerd i can get over on him he's weak he's docile i can get him for a couple of dollars and the thing is a lot of these dudes, they're overly romantic because they haven't found their swag yet. See, the thing is, if you fuck around with one of these nerds and they catch them a little dose of swag, they're going to flip it on you. And that's the thing. A lot of these overly romantic nerds, they just haven't found their swag yet. So this is why they think that they have to be romantic and they have to bow down and do all this shit. But the thing is, some of these overly romantic nerds, they might have certain... Um, attributes that they haven't tapped into yet they haven't understood what assets they had so you got to be weary of that because the thing is if you fuck with a dude who doesn't know how thorough he, or doesn't know his potential and he finds out his potential while he's with you he's going to flip it on you for example you might be fucking with a dude who's a nerd who's a geek but that nigga got like 14 inches of dick that you don't know about <laughs> And then you try to decide to get with him. You're like, you calling your homegirls on the phone like, girl, yeah, this is a little nerd dude who sweat me. And, um, you know, I need my little rent knocked out this month. So I think I'm, I'm going to give him some this weekend because, yeah, there's a little bag at the mall that I want to. I see a little Fendi bag that I want him to buy. So, you know, he, he's been hanging around for about three, four months. So I'm going to give him some this weekend and get him sprung so he can pay, pay my rent and get this bag for me. And then you go have sex with this motherfucker. And he put 14 inches of nerd dick on your ass and then you get turned out. He's going all up in your stomach. <laughs> and you're like, oh, shit. You, damn, you hit my rib. And he's like, did I do that? Yeah, yeah, nigga, you did that. You killing the bitch. <laughs> Sorry. You know, you, he's on some Urkel shit. Now he's got some swag. Because he knows that he he's dicking you down and you kind of catching feelings. Now he's going to switch it up on you. You understand when a, a nerd dude sees that his swag is coming through and he sees he's getting you to catch feelings, he's going to change it up a bit. At first, when you're fucking him, he's like, do you like that? That make you feel good? 
And after the three, third or fourth fuck, he's going to get some testosterone in his voice. He's going to be like, hey, why don't you bend that ass over so I can smack them cheeks while I fuck that ass? He's going to switch it up on you. And then you're going to end up getting sprung fucking with this nigga who you thought was a nerd. All he's going to pawn all his World of Warcraft um, um, DVDs and, and games. He's going to get rid of all that shit. He's going to catch him some swag. So you better watch out for a dude like that. Y'all don't sleep on those overly romantic nerds. You fuck with these dudes who you think is a nerd and he flipped the game on your ass. So you got to be very careful, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, y'all, that's been today's episode of the Mac Lessons Radio Show family. It's been real. We've had a great time on today's show. Don't forget, man, go to kickstarter.com right now, family. Kickstarter.com right now. Donate right now. If everybody today and tomorrow donate just five bucks, everybody who's listening, and I got thousands of people who's listening, if everybody donate just five bucks, we'll get the funding overnight. It's that simple. We got to start getting stuff done without having to just kind of pull teeth. Let's just get shit done and keep it pushing so we can get this information and get this game out here so we can keep um, growing and building. So go to kickstarter.com and type in Hidden Colors 3. And don't forget, y'all, go to um, tarikaelite.com and get the clothing, my T-shirts, my jackets, my hats are on sale right now. We got wonderful stuff at tarikaelite.com. And don't forget to go to tariklive.com and get tickets to join me in Nashville, Tennessee this weekend. We're going to have a good time in Nashville. I'm going to holler at you. Follow me on Twitter at Tariq Nasheed. Follow me on Instagram at Tariq Elite Family. I will holla. Peace.